It is Coach Lou Holtz. Coach, welcome to the David Glenn Show. How are you? I'm doing fine, David. Delighted to be with you. And I, I just want to say this. This is the 21st year we've had the All-State AFCA Good Works team. But the reason it came about, Dave, we read about all the negative things where guys are arrested. We never read about the positive things that people do. And so they select 22 athletes each year, uh, 11 from each division, that have done marvelous things. You know, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Tim Tebow been on it. And I hope people go to ESPN.com and search good work and see the wonderful things these people have done. And at the same time there, click on who the team captain is. And then we'll bring the whole team, all 22, to the All-State Sugar Bowl for a week. They'll be involved in a humanitarian cause and be recognized at halftime. And so it's a great thing because we're trying to recognize good things that are done because all we hear about are the negative things. Coach, that sounds like the perfect combination. Imagine how hard it is in life to find that woman who is not only beautiful and has a great personality, but she's sweet and she's loving and she's your soulmate. How rare is it in sports? You were a coach and had a lot of players for a long time. How rare is it to get that guy who's both the All-American on the field and that super good work style citizen off the field, because it sounds like a parallel to finding that perfect woman, doesn't it? It really is, but you didn't mention she should be rich. Also. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I would tell you that it's, I think it, you develop it. They, they see the sense of the obligation to help other people. When you consider this, all the opportunities that these great athletes, I'm talking about Aaron Murray, Mike Golick uh, from Notre Dame, uh, uh, Jones for the All-American lineman from Alabama, Colin Klein, the quarterback from Kansas State, the opportunities they have to go to parties, and they're involved in doing good things for other people. And it's something that I think is necessary, but it happens more than we would like to think it does, and that's why we've been doing this for 21 years to recognize people who do this, because once again, you never read about it. You're only going to hear about the arrest. Lou Holtz is joining us on the David Glenn Show. As he said, fans can visit ESPN.com, search Good Works, and there are 22 new inspirational stories there for this year's team members. There was big news here in ACC country last week, Coach, as you know. For the first time, the ACC welcomed a school, Notre Dame, as something less than a full member, with football being the big exception, obviously. You know Notre Dame well. Was the ACC wise to make an exception for the Fighting Irish? No, I think it's a win-win for both Notre Dame and the ACC. Let, let me tell you why I think it's a win for the ACC. Uh, number one, you get a great athletic program, women's soccer, by women's basketball, tennis, et cetera. In addition to that, you're going to play every conference school every three years. That means that that's going to help that school in recruiting. I know that they'll say, okay, you're going to get a chance. You come to our school, you'll get to play against Notre Dame. It's going to help the ACC in their attendance because what we found out when I was there, we never played in front of an empty seat, and teams would charge more if they'll play to watch the Notre Dame game. And sometimes you had to buy a season ticket to be able to get a Notre yeah. Dame ticket for that game. So it's going to help their attendance. It's going to help the ACC in their bowl affiliation. People are now going to want the ACC even more so because now Notre Dame is part of that. On the other hand, let's look at it from Notre Dame. It helps Notre Dame because of their non-revenue sports. I've always said Notre Dame would never join a conference unless they're forced to because of all the other sports other than football. Notre Dame's sitting there saying, gee, we're in the Big East. That means we've got to go to Boise State. We've got to travel all over the world for all our sports. You look at the swimming team. You look at the cost. But more importantly, when I was at Notre Dame, they had a policy. The athlete could not miss more than three school days a year do the athletic competition, and you're joining. And Notre Dame saying that isn't going to work out traveling all over the country. Uh, I'm going to sue my geography professor because he never told me Boise was in the East. <laughs> and, and they're sitting there saying this isn't good. We got to find a place for him now. I think what the big the ACC was smart. They said, okay, you won't join our conference, but we're going to have you play five games a year with our opponents in football. Well. Good Lord knows, they may as well be in it. They're going they're to be qualified for the championship, so to speak, playing five games. But I think that Jack Swarbrick, the athletic director at Notre Dame, was very smart, and he felt he had to do this 
Uh, it helps Notre Dame in their bowls. I'll uh, get a chance to go to a different bowl, which they were sort of shut out before. But in addition to that, it really helps them with their other sports. Coach Lou Holtz is joining us on the David Glenn Show. You have seen this world from so many different angles, Coach. NC State, I mentioned back in the day, there are William and Mary fans who remember you <laughs> as their head coach. Heck, Arkansas and Minnesota and South Carolina and, of course, the Fighting Irish. I've read articles about the theory where something as simple as the movement of the population of the United States to the south makes it a lot harder for Notre Dame to do what they did for much of the 20th century, and you led them to the 1988 national title, so much harder in part because of demographic reasons to sort of recapture those glory days. Do you believe that with the right coach, the Fighting Irish can get back to where you took them in 1988? Oh, I think it's easy. I, I think it's much easier now than it was in 88 for several reasons. You look at the facilities. The facilities now, it's unbelievable. They have a $25 million football facility, their practice field, the beauty of the school. I mean, they have so many things. Now, yeah, a lot more people are da- coming down south, but they're still Catholic. They didn't <laughs> change their religion. They say, okay, you got to become a Baptist. Uh, yeah. and, and not only that, Notre Dame has that national appeal to people all over. I mean, you you never have a problem with athletes or talent in Notre Dame. You stick your head out the kitchen door and give a holler and get 12 <laughs> All-Americans. I mean, I go there in 86, the program was in shambles, but we had good football players. They just didn't know how to win. So I don't think there's any justification whatsoever to feel that way. Coach Lou Holtz is joining us on the David Glenn Show. When you were a young coach, it seemed like men's basketball and football really shared the responsibility of paying all the bills in the athletic department. And nowadays, Coach, heck, you're a TV guy. Younger people remember you more as a broadcaster as a, yeah. than as a coach. But these TV executives will say 80% of the value of these conference TV deals are tied to football. Did you sense this trend coming at some point in your career as a coach or broadcaster? Well, I, I found it out at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, the athletic director, Dick Rosedahl, a very good friend of mine, the basketball broke even. Uh, football paid for all sports, and this that on the average, we gave $13 million back to Notre Dame from all the revenue, and we did not raise money. Uh, we weren't allowed to raise money as contributions because that had to go to Notre Dame. They didn't want to be involved with football. And uh, we paid for everything else. And that was before the NBC TV contract. That's why the amount of money, and that's why we don't see a playoff, because follow the money is per se, because of basketball, all that money from the NCAA basketball goes to the NCAA. They negotiate the contract. In football, the money from bowls and TVs goes to the conference. If you're in the SEC, you're going to get 18 to $20 million a year for just being involved in that uh, conference, and most of it comes from football. There's no doubt about it. And that's why they're paying coaches $4 million a year, <laughs> whereas when I was there, I, I made 135000 I thought that I was stealing. <laughs> Coach Lou Holtz is joining us on the David Glenn Show. He is working with the 2012 All-State AFCA Good Works team. Fans can visit ESPN.com. Search Good Works. There are 22 new inspirational stories on this year's team members. We do not have in football, Coach, top 10 versus top 10 matchups in ACC country very often, at least not in the last decade, but but the eyes of the nation are going to be on Clemson at Florida State this coming weekend. Do you see either the Seminoles or the Tigers as serious contenders for the national championship? No, I definitely think Florida State is. If I had to predict right now, I'd say Florida State and Alabama would play for the national championship. And not only because Florida State's awfully good in all phases of the game, but also because of their schedule. After they get by Clemson and they have Florida at home, I don't see anybody on that schedule that they could beat them. And this is a big game. The third week of the season is not a uh, – or excuse me, the fourth week of the season is not a good week because the, the conferences open up next week. So they always play our Sisters of Mercy or all those directional <laughs> state schools this week so they can get ready for the conference. But Clemson and Florida State game day will be there. That's how big this game is. Yeah. And uh, I, I think at Clemson, uh, I don't know which Clemson is going to show up. You know, consider this. Last year, Alabama gave up nine touchdowns 
in 13, 14 games. Nine touchdowns. Clemson gave up 10 in their bowl game. And that was against West Virginia. Now they went out and brought in Brett Venerables, who was the Oklahoma defensive coordinator. Maybe he'll make a difference, but I don't think Clemson will be able to stop Florida State. And I'm anxious to see how good Mark Stoops' defense is at Florida State. They've been outstanding the last year or so, but they're going to be challenged uh, with uh, Taj Boyd, Ellington, uh, Watkins, et cetera. So this is going to be a great interest to me. And if Florida State's as dominating as I think they will be, you'd have to be one of my favorites to play in the championship game. As I mentioned earlier, there are six schools that like to claim you as their head football coach. And, <laughs> and one of those six is right here in North Carolina, Coach, where our show is statewide. What can you tell us about your recollections of those four seasons in Raleigh? Because uh, obviously you got an, an ACC title during your time with the Wolfpack before you went on to several other stops. But certainly uh, Wolfpack fans remember you fondly. I, I love North Carolina State and have nothing but great memories. Uh, we went to four straight bowls of four years, I was there. It was just a great time because we had great basketball. So we had David Thompson and uh, Monty Tao and Burleson, et cetera. So we, we were very, very good. But where I really got the NC State job was the year before. I'm at William Mary. We go play North Carolina. They were 10-1, and one, and North Carolina went 60 yards on an incomplete pass. 30 yards where it bounced. <laughs> And then 30 yards of penalties on me for being on the referee. And I never even used profanity. <laughs> and, and, and because we ended up losing 36-35, NC State hired me from William and & Mary. And uh, I remember my first year, we went over and played North Carolina. It was a heck of a game. We lose by one point in the last second. Our fans over there at Carolina gave us a standing ovation. Everybody from North Carolina calling us Moo You and Agriculture You. And I remember walking in the press conference saying, I want everybody in the state to understand agriculture is better than no culture. <laughs> and, and you know what? You know how I find this hard. But the next three years we played North Carolina, I was called for jury duty every year. <laughs> and did you try to get out of jury duty? That wasn't easy. That was harder getting out of jury duty than playing the game. Lou Holtz, I know we have to let you go. Tell me one quick thing. Your son Skip has joined us over the years, especially during his time at East Carolina, and told a lot of stories of wearing Wolfpack gear back when he was a young boy. Given that you saw him getting into coaching at some point, what advice did you give him as his dad about being a dad? When he came and said he wanted to be a coach at Notre Dame, I said, we didn't send you to Notre Dame to be a coach. I said, you'd be president of the corporation. I could send you to Kent State to be a coach. And I said, if you told your mom, yeah, he said, no. I said, make sure she's unarmed because she'll shoot you. But he went into coaching for the proper reason. He loves the athletes. He's smart. He's a good competitor. He's got a good mind on him. I'm very proud of him, and I'm soon going to be known as Skip's dad, and that's fine with me. <laughs> Lou Holtz, thanks very much for the visit, Coach.